undefeated the great. Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Amen. 
God bless you this morning for being in the house of the Lord on this Easter Sunday morning. Praise God. We're going to worship the Lord, glorify Him. I want to thank all the volunteers this weekend for the activities that have gone on and preparing things, the eggs, the egg hunt and serving, just, just ministering and service where possible. Praise God for all of that. Amen. Let me just inject there. If you've got any questions about next Saturday with uh, the ladies preparing food, see Sister Vilia over here. She can help and give you guidance in that area there. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and then invite the presence of the Lord in this morning. If you want to this morning, if you're a guest with us, I, I had surgery, spinal surgery, a few weeks back, and so still having to wear this collar most of the time, especially when I may get excited and move around very much. Uh, so uh, continue to pray for me. I covet your prayers there that God will touch and God bless you for those that are guests with us this morning. We we trust the most important thing this morning is not for you to see what somebody may be wearing or, or see somebody this morning except Jesus Christ. We want you to have an encounter with Christ this morning. That is our goal. Most of all today is for Christ to show up in this house and you to have a life transforming power of God touch in your heart and your life this morning. Stand to your feet this morning. As we go to the Lord in prayer and ask that God will touch in hearts and lives today, He is able. Our God is able this morning. Amen. And we believe in God for miracles in this house this morning. For God to touch you where you need Him to touch in your life this morning. Maybe you've got a need. If you want to just lift your hand and say, Pastor, I've got a need of God to touch in my life today. Amen. You see these hands raised around this, this house? Come on, look around those hands that are raised in this house this morning. Let's believe God to touch right now and touch. Lord God, we come before you this morning. I pray and ask, Lord, that you reveal yourself, Lord God, right now. Lord, you know the need. God, you know the need in the hearts, Lord, of those. Lord, each one this morning. Lord, every hand that was raised. Lord, every heart, Lord God, that is struggling this morning. Lord, you know what that need is right now. Lord, you know the battle that they're faced with. But Lord God, as our brother shared already this morning, Lord God, that we know you're able to show up. Lord, in the midst of that battle in our life this morning, Lord God, you're a God that is a right on time God to show up in our need to show up, Lord, in our struggles and our battles. And we come together this morning in that precious name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, come. Come into this house right now. Oh, come on, saints of God. Lift your hands towards heaven right now. Oh, let's cry out. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Fill this tabernacle. Lord, fill hearts and lives this morning. Lord God, we love you and praise you this morning. Lord, you're greater than anything. Lord, greater than any battle. Lord, any difficulties. Lord God Almighty, I pray, Lord God, that you touch this house. Touch this place, Lord God, right now with your presence, Lord Jesus. Glory. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Fill this tabernacle, Lord. We love you, Lord. We praise you this morning. We love you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Now I'm forgiven. I'm called righteous. I'm made.
with us. There are ushers that will meet them out at the back there and escorting them out, please. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Turn with your Bibles this morning, if you will, to Matthew, the 27th chapter. The book of Matthew, the 27th chapter this morning. Matthew 27, verse 62 the title of my message this morning is Make It As Sure As You Can. You ever heard the phrase when somebody's maybe questioning something that we've done that says, well, are you sure? Are you really sure? Come on. Let me go ahead and tell you this morning. Nothing stops God. I said nothing. You know, the Easter story can never be hindered. Enemies of the cross have tried to hide the light of Jesus. Easter reveals Jesus still shines bright today. Matthew 27 and verse 62 says, On the next day, 
which followed the day of preparation. The chief priests and Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, say, Sir, we remember while he was still alive how the deceiver said, listen to this, after three days I will arise and therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people he has risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Verse 65 says that Pilate said unto him, said unto them, you have a guard. Go your way. Make it as sure as you know how. Make it as sure as you know how. So that they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the tomb and setting the guard. This man throughout history has been quick to proclaim that God is dead. Man throughout history has sought to hinder Easter's power. Let me tell you something, church. Voltaire was a French atheist in 1694, born through 1778. He hated the church and he hated Christianity. He proclaimed that in, the, in his lifetime that the name of Jesus would be stamped out of existence. Years after Voltaire's death, the Bible Society purchased Voltaire's property with a huge printing press and they used that then to print Bibles from. Where is Voltaire today? And where is Jesus Christ? Come on, somebody. I want you to understand this morning that this world and the spirit of this world and all things, Easter still glows today and God is still alive and on His throne this morning. Fame has tried to hinder Easter's power throughout the years. Many of us, even this morning, that is a little older, remember the Beatles and how the Beatles from England invaded the United States and Christianity, they said, would go. John Lennon said, according to an article, it will vanish and shrink. I needn't argue about that. I'm right, he said, and I will prove, be proved right we're more popular than Jesus now he said come on somebody where are the Beatles today <laughs> and where is Jesus come on somebody do we understand Easter still grows I said Easter still grows we need to understand that this morning church that all around us that this world system will try to rob society church we need to understand our money will ever hide Easter's power we need to understand that one of the most famous atheists alive was Madeline O'Hara. We know the story of her, the American Atheist Organization. She was president of that group and church. She was famous for Murray versus Curlette lawsuit in 1963 that officially ended Bible reading in our public school system. And Madeline O'Hara desired the freedom from religion. And in 1995, Marilyn, her son, John, and her granddaughter, Robin, were found kidnapped, murdered, and mutilated. They never would have been able to identify her body had she not had a hip replacement. And they got the serial numbers off of that. Listen to me this morning, church. She vowed to see the church and the name of Jesus Christ wiped off the face of the earth. But where is Madeline today? I'm telling you, but Jesus still shines today. We need to understand the power of this 
Easter message, the power of the Easter and what it means to each and every one of us in our hearts today, church. We need to know and remember that Roman soldier recalling Jesus as he promised on the third day, I will rise again. Church, they said, let's nip that in the bud right quick. Like, let's, let's make sure that that doesn't happen. Let's make sure that there's no way that can take place. Listen, the best armies in the world cannot stop the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Come on, give God a hand up in the house. <laughs> the Beatles, Madeline O'Hare, Voltaire, the devil and all his demons cannot hinder the power of Easter this morning. Come on, somebody. The power of that message of Easter. We need to understand, church. We can allow worry to enter our lives. But I can tell you, can worry hinder the lesson of Easter? I'm telling you, church, can a big stone stop that Eastern story? That Easter story, church, who will roll away that stone? I'm telling you this morning, uh, if you've got something in your life this morning, trust that God is bigger than that stone. He's bigger than any problem. Bigger than any mountain. My God this morning is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can even think or ask this morning. <laughs> As Ephesians 3 and 20 there states that fact, church, we need to understand something in our lives. God's redemptive plan can never be stopped. No soldier, no personalities, no political system. Come on, somebody this morning. Hey Amen. I don't care what a president tries to declare. I don't care what any government tries to declare. I believe what thus saith the Lord. Come on, somebody. I said what thus saith the Lord. No money, no celebrities, no sin. I said nothing can snuff out the victory that is in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Matthew the 28th chapter, that Easter message. Now after the Sabbath it says, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And his countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and began to be like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. For he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Listen, Easter has a lesson, church, of the keys. What does a key represent, church? Keys unlock. Keys show control. Keys, church, is the teacher's answer. What is it, church? The Creator made everything when God gave the keys and the authority to human creation in that garden of Gethsemane, in that garden of Eden. And Genesis 1 tells us in verse 28, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Listen to that authority that God gave 
unto mankind in the beginning church it seems that Adam and Eve sold the keys of control over to sin listen church the control of the keys of authority fell into the enemy's hands so temporary custody of the keys fell into the hands of the enemy of God oh we think Lord God where's hope gone but Easter come on somebody that story of Easter is about where Jesus purchased back God's authority where Easter speaks church all of these things returning the keys to the new man to the born again man to the child of God Matthew 16 and 19 says I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you buy on earth will be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Mm. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Somebody Woo. say glory. glory. <laughs> my God. Oh my God this morning church do we understand in all things the power of God be manifest uh, that Easter story church uh, that Easter story reaches far beyond uh, an empty cross uh, an empty grave clothes uh, an empty tomb uh, these six hours church uh, on the cross uh, changed history forever right. give me my hand cup of praise this morning <laughs> oh. As you look at Revelations, that first chapter, you begin to see that man walking uh, among the seven candlesticks. Uh, you begin to see church uh, in full leaf garment, uh, a girdle of gold, uh, Jesus' hair uh, white as snow. Uh, his eyes uh, are flaming uh, with fire. Uh, his feet uh, are as brass. Uh, his voice uh, is as the sound of many waters. Uh, he has seven stars uh, in his right hand. Uh, and out of his mouth uh, is a sharp two-edged sword uh, and his countenance is, countenance is like unto the sun. <laughs> he says in verse 18 there, I am. <laughs> Ooh, glory. <clears throat> I remember when Moses stood before a burning bush that did not consume. <laughs> he said, go and deliver my people. He said, who shall I say is sent me? He said, say, I am. Yes. I am. Yes. Glory, glory. He is still the great I am this morning uh, that is able to deliver in your life. Uh, we need to understand this morning, uh, I am uh, he that liveth uh, and was dead. Uh, and behold, uh, I am uh, alive forevermore. Amen. Uh, and uh, have the keys uh, of hell and of death. Uh, I like him putting that, uh, saying, I am. Uh, I am. Uh, he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive because my God is alive he was in Genesis he was in Exodus and he's still alive in the book of Revelations the revelation of Jesus Christ as you begin to look church what the Bible begins to tell us there in that last book of the Bible, it opens up their church in the revelation, that revelation of Jesus Christ himself. Do we understand the church from the very beginning until the end, Jesus Christ is still that Alpha, that Omega, verse 8 says, the beginning and the ending which is and which was, which is to come. Oh, the Almighty. The Almighty. I'm telling you, He is 
our almighty God. He is that Easter message that is still ringing today. He is still that Easter message, that Easter story that changed the world and our hope is returned. Oh, Adam and Eve messed up in that garden, but let me tell you that Jesus come to restore. I'm telling you one day, church, he's going to return and he's going to bring all restoration but in the meantime church he's given back those keys of authority that is in Christ <laughs> maybe the last time they mocked him and said you're the son of God if you are the son of God I tell you the devil may be trying to sing that same tune to you today or well, maybe the last time they hacked and they spit Maybe they gambled at his feet. Maybe they had wine and vinegar. Maybe the light of the world died in darkness that day. Darkness that filled the earth. Darkness thinking, what now? Maybe the water of life died thirsty. Maybe the brother died alone. Maybe church just maybe, but no greater love than to give you life. As Jesus said, as he took that last breath upon that cross, it is finished. He's not telling you that all hope is lost. He's putting that stamp on it and saying it's done. He's putting a stamp on it uh, and saying the victory uh, is won. I'm telling you this morning, church, uh, in the midst of it all, uh, in the midst of our battles, uh, it may be the cry of praise uh, on Palm Sunday changed to crucify. But I'm telling you, Easter Sunday morning, I uh, came around church uh, that next time uh, after that Easter story, uh, the behavior will be different. Romans 14 and 11 says, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. Every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. <laughs> Victory. Victory shall be mine. Victory shall be mine. I'm telling you this morning, church, there was a battle that was fought. I'm telling you that there was a battle in that garden of Gethsemane when Jesus began to pray, Lord, if it, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But if not, not my will, that thy will be done. How many of us this morning can pray that prayer in our lives? Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Victory. 1 Corinthians 15 and 55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. The message version says it this way. Who got the last word? Oh, death. Who's afraid of you now? I like that. Who's got the last word now? Who's afraid of you now? Because Jesus, because of that first Easter morning, because of that first Easter morning church. It was sin that made death so frightening church. And law called guilt that gave sin its leverage, its destructive power. But Jesus Christ come to give victory over death, hell, and the grave. I want the singers to come to the platform. We don't have to live in worry and fear anymore. We don't have to live in worry. We don't have to live in fear of sin. We don't have to live in fear of this world. 
Let me tell you something this morning. We have victory in Jesus. Amen. We have victory through what Christ did. As he took his last words, he said, it is finished. It's done. Amen. Victory is won. Oh, but pastor, you don't understand, he died on that cross. Oh, but see, all hell, it tells us that all hell begin to rejoice, thinking we got him where we want him now. <laughs> But on that first Easter Sunday morning, on that first Easter Sunday morning, I'm telling you this morning, church, he says in Psalms, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. Listen, church. I don't know if you've ever thought about it this way. But that scripture says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Have you ever been in a room that is so black that you can't see your hand in front of your face? Let me just ask you a question to think about and ponder upon. How many shadows do you see in that room? Say, Pastor, I don't understand. There cannot be a shadow without there is some light. There cannot be a shadow without there is some light. Jesus is light. See, the devil wants you to think that there's no light. The devil wants you to think that there is no hope. But I'm telling you this morning, church, in the midst of it all, if there is a shadow, there has to be light. The purpose, church, also of that rod and thy staff, church. Yeah, listen, ever know the difference between a violin and a fiddle? Let me tell you something, church. The same instrument, the difference is how it's played. It's either... Mozart's number nine or boil the cabbage down the bluegrass. <laughs> oh, see a violin sings but a fiddle dances. Come on. I want you to understand something this morning. The rod is for correction and discipline. The staff is for support. To draw that lamb close to the master for security I'm telling you, you can know victory this morning I'm telling you that first Easter Sunday morning uh, what do we have church uh, with Easter uh, E-A-S-T-E-R uh, Easter church uh, it spells uh, eternal victory uh, that's what it spells uh, I'm telling you this morning uh, you can know victory uh, over all things Man, if you can pull up Ephesians 3 and 20 for me. God's promise to each and every one of us, each and every one of us, that no matter what we go through, no matter what we deal with in our lives, we can know the victory. Victory shall be mine. Victory shall be mine for we need to understand something this world is trying to do everything it can to stamp out any even image of Christ is trying to bring nothing but total darkness listen to me church I don't care who declares this Easter Sunday as being something trans something I, I want you to know something that Jesus is still the light I'm telling you that Jesus is still the light and Ephesians tells us in that third chapter verse 20 that he is able. Did you hear that? He's able 
to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you can think or ask. I don't know what you need this morning, but He does. I don't know what you've been through, but He does. I don't know what you're facing, but He does. Jesus does. Would you bow your heads across the sanctuary this morning? I want to ask you, do you need Christ in your life? Do you need Christ in your life? You say, Pastor, I want to become a Christian this morning. I want to ask Christ into my heart. Would you just lift that hand up and right back down? Just let this preacher pray with you. Yes, yes. Come on, come on. Just raise that hand right back down. Let me see it this morning. I want to pray with you. I want to believe God to touch in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Or maybe you're going through something. You say, Pastor, I need God to touch in my life. I need God to move. Yes, I see that hand. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I see hands that are going up all across this sanctuary. See, you're not the only one. There are many that are having things in their life. They're going through things in their life. But I'm telling you, we all know the same Lord Jesus. We all know Him this morning. Come on, reach your hands towards heaven this morning. Right where you are across this sanctuary. Reach your hands towards heaven. Lord God, we come before you this morning. Lord God, praying together. Lord God that you would touch the needs Lord that you would touch the lives Lord God you see that man Lord you see that young man right now Lord you see that woman Lord that young lady Lord touch in their lives touch them Lord right now touch them where they are come Lord Jesus come Lord my God is all Jesus he can know
that you've stood wondering where I've gone but I say I am as close today still as a mention of my name have faith in me trust in me saith the Lord that I would do what I have promised in my word for I'm still today the same today as I was yesterday as I was days of old as I was to Abraham as I was to Isaac and I was to Jacob yea I am still to you today call upon my name see what I will do among my people saith the Lord oh give him praise this morning church Jesus oh glory glory God's presence here this morning. Now as God reveals himself, the scripture tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, of that body of being one body, but many parts. But God promises us in the midst of it all, church, if we trust him, he will manifest his presence to reveal himself in our midst through the gift of unknown tongues as we hear even here this morning and the gift of interpretation. God manifests his presence for a reason and it's you. It's me. God so loved the world that's us. That's why we celebrate Easter. But to somebody this morning, the Holy Spirit speaking to you specifically that maybe you've allowed yourself to wane in your spiritual walk. Not what it used to be. Not what God wants it to be. But He's calling you this morning see him reveal himself in your midst in your life we still serve the same God he's still able this morning to do exceedingly abundantly above everything we can even think or ask that's the promise of God stand your feet this morning hallelujah Glory, glory. I cannot say how glad we were to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. You could have worshipped anywhere else, but you chose to come worship with us at Pine Forest. Come on, Pine Forest folks, let's give them a hand. Let them know our guests are glad to have you with us. Amen. Sunday.